Hey buddy, Thomas here. And today I actually had to get my daughter's notebook to go over a lot of stuff I want to talk about today. There's an absolute lot of stuff going on in the world today. And one of the things, if you, you know, if you have any awareness of what's going around you, you know the price of lumber is absolutely through the roof. So we're going to talk about why it's through the roof, what you can do to offset it, when's it supposed to go down, when's the time, when's the time to buy a sawmill, and kind of like some futures and, and what we're looking at here. So I'm going to try my darndest to keep this short and simple. I can't get my pencil out of here right now. But uh, so, okay, why is lumber so high? So last week, now this is from uh, Fortune Magazine and everything. So last week, lumber prices for two by fours were at $1,700 per thousand board foot. That's $1.70 a board foot. That's absolutely enormous prices that we're thinking of right here. Now, July's futures, there is a little bit of hope. July's futures are expected to be around, say, $1,300 or so per thousand board foot. Now, that's for two by fours. So, there is a little bit of hope there. However, a lot of the experts are saying they do not believe that we're going to see $1,000 a board foot um, for, you know, $1,000 per thousand board foot. We don't think we're going to see a dollar per board foot uh, any lower than that ever again. It used to be Five, four, five, six hundred dollars a board foot per thousand. Um, excuse me, per board foot. So, yeah. So long, long story short, I, I think we've got a long way ahead of us, and lumber is going to continue to remain high. However, however, it won't remain as high as what it has been. Uh, we're still expecting to see it quite high. So, why is it so high? Well, of course, one of the main drivers was COVID. So. COVID shut down a lot of the country and has kept a lot of the shut a lot of the country shut down as well, uh, based on you know state rules or, or, or federal rules or anything. So there's a lot of places where they shut down. And then once these sawmills shut down, now they're having a hard time getting people back to work because there's a lot of uh, programs out there where they're handing out money for people who aren't working. Now, I don't want to get all political and everything, but yeah, that's that's not cool. So. We have a lot of mills out there who are trying to play catch up. The other thing, why they're trying to play catch up, is because we've had a lot of stuff in the market. So, home prices have gone through the roof because interest rates are down. So, since interest rates are down and everything, people can afford a little more home, so they're buying a lot more homes. Uh, right now, the millennials, a lot of millennials right now are getting into the age where they're starting to buy their first home. So, there's a lot of first time home buyers out there in the market, and the market is good. For buyers and sellers, buyers in the sense that they're getting a low interest rate, sellers in the sense that they're getting uh, a, a very high price for their house that they're selling, as well as they're getting uh, a lot of uh, competition from you know buyers wanting to buy stuff. So there's a lot of need there as well. Also, because that market is so high, because interest rates are so low, builders' loans are quite low right now. So building is one of the things. So the housing market right now, it has peaked. And it is now starting to show a little bit of a decrease. So uh, last month's home sales were about 9% down from the month previously. So there is a little bit of uh, peaking going on of the home sales. However, we have not seen that peak yet for home building. Home building is still at pretty much record highs right now. So that right there does not help uh, with the price of lumber because there is such a demand. Also, with all these COVID restrictions, you have restaurants out there. They're trying to build a uh, little makeshift sections of their their restaurant and everything to keep people separated so that might be outdoor dining it might be you know sectioned off areas so there's, there's a huge influx on the lumber market out there also with people staying at home uh, and not being able to go to work there was a lot of honey dues to, that they had to get done there was a lot of you know diy type stuff going on people working on their own homes because they couldn't work at work so there all those projects have been saved up over time so there's a whole lot of demand the demand's right there the sawmills right now, again, they are trying to catch up. They're, they are in desperate need of people working at the sawmill, and they're just trying to catch up. Now, one of the other things with that is there's a lot of logs that are just sitting at sawmills because, you know, there's still logging occurring, and they're still buying lumber or buying logs and, and selling it to the sawmills and everything. However, the landowners are really taking a hit on this. Um, I, I was speaking to someone the other day. They're seeing $25 a ton on pine logs. Now this is mostly for pine logs I'm talking about. Um, that's that's pretty low. It's been that way for 10 plus years. It's been like that since the beginning of 2000. $25 a ton. 
So yes, the demand for lumber is way up here. The demand for the logs is really kind of down here. And then the sawmills are trying to play the catch up game, but they have a whole lot of surplus on hand. Uh, with all that surplus there, they don't really need to buy logs at a high price because they have so many logs there. So it's really not helping the landowners, the sellers of uh, the trees and everything. So we've talked about interest rates, we've talked about millennials uh, buying homes or anything. Next topic we're getting into, who has benefited? So who has benefited during this? So to an extent, yes, the small time sawmill guys like myself, we've tried to help. Uh, some of us have kept our prices low and I've seen some other people with prices that are through the roof. But really who has benefited from this are a lot of the lumber stores, like your big box lumber stores. You know, they're the main sellers to the public, if you will. And since the, you know, the demand is way high, the supply is not that high. So it's, it's basic economics. They're going to jack the price up and they have made a lot. So if you look at Lowe's and Home Depot and you can see what their stocks have been here recently through the roof. And a lot of that's been driven by lumber prices. So that's, that's pretty interesting. Um, so as sawmills reopen, like I said, they're kind of behind the power curve because, you know, once, once the demand is there, you know, now they're just constantly trying to feed the beast, just like the ammo crisis going on right now too. Trying to feed the beast, trying to produce as much as you can because people are buying up as fast as you can put it out there. Uh, and I've already talked about the landowners here. So sawmills are back, logging everything, ways to offset. So how can you offset the price of lumber? Of course, you, just like me, you, you can go to the local sawmill guys in your area. Sorry, camera wind. The local sawmill guys in the area, they will actually help you out. Um, right now, I'll tell you my prices. I'm at $1.15 a board foot. Sorry, let me adjust my camera. It seems like it is. Took a little hit there. So $1.15 a board foot, which is the highest I've ever been in everything, uh, for green lumber. Now that's pine of any dimension or anything. I don't care. It's just $1.15 a board foot. That's if I provide the log. If someone else provides the log, I'm at 40 cents a board foot on softwood. In the past, I'd been at anywhere between 80 cents to a dollar a board foot, so I'm not up very much over that. I do know some other mills in the area that are like a dollar 25, a dollar 50. It's it's pretty insane. But one of the guys told me he's like, I'm this high because I can't take any orders. I don't want any more orders. I'm so back. I'm backlog months in advance. So, in order to offset that, you increase your price to try to get stop the flow of, of uh, business. Myself, I'm backlogged about two months. And that's with me working a full-time job. I'm just doing this on the side. And I can kind of pick and choose which jobs I want to take on. But there's a lot of folks out there right now who, you know, have a sawmill and do this full-time. And, and like a, a small sawmill like this and are making quite a good living. So that's, that's, that's good for them. Uh, when to buy a sawmill. So you're going to hate when I say this, but the best time to buy a sawmill was a year ago. <laughs> I mean, that's the truth. Literally uh, a year or more ago was the time to buy a sawmill before the COVID, you know, uh, hit and everything and, and all this you know, demand what was starting to be realized. That's really the time you should have bought a sawmill. Right now, most sawmill ma manufacturers or anything, if you're looking at the, the big ones or anything, we'll say the big four, you got uh, Timber King, well, the, let's go in order of, of largest. Wood Miser is definitely the largest and everything. And I think you've got uh, Baker, Timber King, and Cooks. Those are, we're gonna say those are the main four. Now there's other ones out there, but those are the ones that do have a, essentially a production type mill and everything. You're looking at 60 to 80 week backlog to get a sawmill. That's insane. That's absolutely insane. So like I said, the best time to have bought a sawmill is about a year ago. So if you are in the market for a sawmill, right now you probably are looking at a used sawmill. The problem is, just like the way with lumber is and everything, it is a seller's market. It is not a buyer's market for sawmills, it is a seller's market. So you're, you know, I'm seeing some of these posts of people that are posting sawmills. There's a sawmill that you could have bought a year ago, and I've seen someone post it now for five or $6,000 more. And they'll probably get that because it's the supply and demand. There's not enough supply to meet the demand that's out there. Also, Another thing with these sawmill prices, e or even though the weight and everything, is we're also backlog. I know the sawmill that we have on order, the, we have another sawmill on order and everything. The backlog on it is the engine coming from overseas. It's a, it's a Kubota diesel that goes on it. So 
that right there is one of the backlogs for that. So also you have all the steel prices out there. So there's, there's a huge increase on steel. So the prices you're seeing are subject to change because of the demand that's out there and the uncertainty of when the stuff will be in and at what price, say steel and, and stuff like that will be in to us. So what should you do if you're looking for a sawmill right now? Well, I'm gonna tell you you need to wait about a year. And the reason I say that is because everyone and their uncle right now is buying a sawmill. They're trying to get onto this wave. But we've already talked about the wave is starting to, we've already peaked, we're starting to go a little bit down. I don't think it's gonna level off like what it, you know, calm sea state and everything. I still think we're gonna be at an elevated price, but uh, everyone in, the, in their uncle is trying to get these sawmills and everything and, and the, wait line, the waits are just so long. Once people start getting these sawmills, and these are people who have never owned a sawmill in their lives, they're gonna find out how much work it is. I'm not gonna lie. It's a lot of work to do all this, especially if you're a one-man operation or anything. I'm not saying it's impossible, but you have to have a strong work ethic, work ethic to run a sawmill and try to make a living off of it. If you think you're just gonna run a sawmill and just you know make it rich, I mean, you're, you're gonna be doing a lot of work. And then there's a lot of other investments you have to invest in. So hopefully if you're looking to buy a first time sawmill and everything, you're also looking at a tractor. You definitely need a tractor to go with that. And that's a whole other thing. Go look at any kind of uh, vehicle market right now, tractor market, everything is like super backlogged um, because of, unfortunately, because of COVID. So like I said, wait about a year or so. People are <laughs> have these sawmills or just getting these sawmills. They're gonna find out how hard it is. They're gonna be like, man, it's not really worth it. Once the price starts to drop off on the lumber and everything, they're gonna say it's not worth it. And they're gonna start selling these. So right now is a seller's market on sawmills. In about a year, I'd say a year and a half, we're looking at it's gonna be a buyer's market. There's gonna be an influx of used sawmills on the market. So I hope that's helpful to some people. It might not have been what you wanted to hear, but uh, it's it's kind of a crappy time that we're in right now. You know, it, it's good. I mean, I, I'm making more on pine and dimensional lumber than I've ever made in the past. And I'm getting orders out the wazoo. I, I'm turning away orders because I can't take them. I mean, it was funny, like uh, uh, a month ago, I was down to three logs, three pine logs to my name. Now I have 80 pine logs to my name and I have orders that'll keep me busy for the next two months. And I'm trying to do a sawmill show in between all this. So it's, it's been really, really busy. Uh, I do enjoy the heck out of this though. It's a lot of fun and I will say it's a very therapeutic experience owning and running a sawmill. So again, just some information out there. Hope this was helpful to some folks out there. There is light in the horizon, I guess you would say, for the lumber prices starting to go down a little bit for anyone trying to build a home. Uh, one last note, I have an uncle who's trying to build a home right now. They, you know, negotiated everything prior to COVID and everything, COVID hit, everything kind of got put on hold and everything. Well, their contractor came back to him and says, we need to renegotiate your, uh, your lumber package. And uh, $45,000 more lumber package? Yeah, it, it went up that much. And I have another buddy here. He's building a home too. Uh, he got quotes essentially last spring, last summer time frame. And I think his lumber package up is, is, is up around $60,000 more than what he initially thought. So that's, that's, a tough, that's a tough pill to swallow. Um, and one of the things we're looking at, if we move, well, we are going to be moving next year. I'm not going to tell you where. Some, some of my subscribers know, but... Uh, we are contemplating building a home, but the good thing is, is I have my mill, my dad's getting a mill. Uh, we got a, we got a supply of lumber, so that'll help offset some of the costs. But again, if you like what you're talking or what I'm talking about here or what uh, the channel is all about, uh, please like, subscribe. The channel is growing and looking forward to seeing people June 12th here in Loosedale, Mississippi for a sawmill extravaganza, if you will. We'll have six, maybe up to eight sawmills. I've talked to a few other folks. It's going to be a all around good time, good experience. Hope to see you there. Talk to you later. Thanks.